Welcome back, y'all. We've got some more updates to the ongoing situation with Bungie's layoffs. When initially, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out front with this right away and say that I was wrong. This is not Sony's doing. This is not Sony. This is purely Bungie and their executives making these decisions. So that's where I'll say I was wrong. I gave Pete Parsons here the benefit of the doubt. I should not have this guy. Okay, so we're gonna get that out of the way. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's no laughing matter, but the absurdity of it, it's hard not to uh, to laugh. You know, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely absurd. So we can see here from Destiny Bulletin, this is via IGN. They did some, uh, some deep diving on the situation and were able to come to some conclusions here. An excerpt spells out, Bungie CEO Pete Parsons allegedly told remaining employees that the company had kept the right people, focus on that, the right people, to continue work on Destiny 2. Layoffs were largely due to D2's underperformance over the last year and lower than expected pre-orders for the final shape. We also have an article here from Bloomberg. We're gonna dive into this real quick from Jason Schreier, of course. Pretty much anything that comes out of Jason Schreier pretty much is, is truth and fact when it comes to the gaming industry. The dude never misses. So as we can see here, we've got Sony's Bungie game unit cut 8% of staff after Destiny play wilted. Sales at studio are running 45% below projections for year. Layoffs are part of a bigger revamp at Sony PlayStation unit. So although this does say here that this is a part of a revamp at Sony's PlayStation unit, the decision making, the finger pointing, and the termination is in Bungie's hands. This is on them. Here we have Bungie's decision to cut an estimated 100 jobs from its staff of about 1,200 followed dire management warnings earlier this month of a sharp drop in the popularity of its flagship video game, Destiny 2. Just two weeks ago, executives at the Sony-owned game developer told employees that revenue was running 45% below projections for the year, according to people who attended the meeting. Chief Executive Officer, the CEO of Bungie, Pete Parsons, pinned the big miss on weak player retention for Destiny 2, which has faced a poor reception since the release of its latest expansion, Lightfall. And we all know how that played out. Lightfall was probably one of the worst, if not the worst, DLC released by Bungie for Destiny 2. Shadowkeep is a pretty close second, but with everything that has been built up for how, how far down the line we have been with the Destiny franchise, Lightfall was a massive miss. The next expansion, The Final Shape, was getting good, not great, feedback, and management told those present that they planned to push back the release to June 2024 from February. According to the people who asked not to be identified because they weren't authorized to speak publicly, the additional time would give developers a chance to improve the product. So that seems to be a relatively shallow explanation. The bigger explanation comes from the the fiscal year discovery that we found. Sony's fiscal year ends in, I believe, March and then starts again in April. And this tactic by delaying the launch of an expansion sort of pads the stats for the year and how much the company makes. It looks good to investors and, you know, for their stocks. You know, it's a money, it's a money tactic. It is purely out of greed. There is no other reason for it. They say that it is because they're not getting great feedback, only good feedback, but honestly, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. When you compare the two possibilities, the money one seems to be the most glaringly obvious one of the two. Sure, maybe it's not in its best state just yet. We are a couple of months out, so, you know, it is still relatively early uh, to call it, but I would have to say the money is, is, the, is the big kicker here. In the meantime, Parsons told staff Bungie would be cutting costs, such as for travel, as well as implementing salary and hiring freezes, the people said. Everyone would have to work together to weather the storm, he said, leaving employees feeling determined to do whatever was needed to get revenue back up. But on Monday morning, the news got worse. Dozens of staffers woke up to mysterious 15 minute meetings that had been placed on their calendars, which they soon learned were a part of a mass layoff. Bungie laid off around 8% of its employees, about 100 employees. According to documentation reviewed by Bloomberg, Bungie didn't respond to request for comment. Employees who were let go will receive at least three months of severance and three months of Bungie paid Cobra health insurance, although other benefits such as expense reimbursements ended Monday, sending some staff racing to submit their receipts. Laid off staffers will also receive prorated bonuses, although those were on a vesting schedule following Sony Group Core's acquisition of Bungie in January 2022, will lose any shares that weren't vested as of next month. And they got laid off on the 30th. That gives them one day 
a whole day to get this figured out. A whole day, that's a very long time, guys. That's, wow, that's that's generous. That's unbelievably generous. The layoffs are a part of a larger money-saving initiative at Sony's PlayStation unit, which also cut employees at studios such as Naughty Dog, Media Molecule, and its San Mateo office. TD Cohen analyst Doug Cruitz wrote in a report Monday that events over the last few days led us to believe that PlayStation is undergoing a restructuring. PlayStation president Jim Ryan announced that last month that he had plans to resign. Many of the layoffs at Bungie affected the company's support departments, such as a community management and publishing. Remaining Bungie staff were informed that some of those areas will be outsourced moving forward. So rather than keeping the people that are with the company, the ones that have been there for a very long time, the, the front facing crowd, the ones that we can we can interact with the ones that relay a lot of the information to us the ones who write the twids the twabs any updates patch notes social media communication all of that that group the, even though they're the ones that were established in those positions for bungie the faces that we recognize those have been fired and they would rather outsource that to a different company to a different group of people to relay that information to us removing any of the personality any of the sort of personal connections that we have built over the past five 10 years with Destiny and further on back to the Halo days. It's, it's very disappointing. I said on my Twitter something about Destiny Bulletin posted something and I responded, I said, this this particular wave of layoffs hits a little differently than a lot of the other layoffs. It feels more personal, like not, obviously not personal towards the community. In some ways it does feel sort of personal to the community because these are people that we have grown used to and kind of know on a social media level. So it is, it's, it's much more, it's much more unfortunate when it is people you recognize that you associate with those positions at Bungie being laid off rather disappointing. So we have here, here's some more information that was revealed. Uh, Paul Tassi, follow him up here, Paul Tassi on Twitter or X, I guess. Uh, phenomenal for phenomenal for Destiny news. Anybody who follows Destiny, I'm sure knows who Paul Tassi is. So I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but he posted up some photos here, uh, including some new information around the Bungie layoffs. This says the layoff decisions came directly from Bungie management, not Sony. This is not about Sony replacing Bungie employees with their own people. Many employee benefits, though not health insurance, only last until the end of the month if you are let go. Laying people off on the 30th means a single additional day of coverage. Past that, you're fucked. Many employees had unvested shares as a result of the Sony purchase. These shares would be received based on staying with the company for a certain number of years following the sale, but those shares revert to Bungie if you leave even if you're fired, which is what's happening now to many of those affected. On the side here, as an additional post, he says, additionally, this may be a part of wider cost cutting at Sony in multiple areas, but as an independent entity who gets cut, the timing and terms as above are Bungie's decision. To clarify an earlier point, health insurance lasts until severance ends, other benefits end today. So the health insurance portion will last about three months past their termination, which is what we saw here in the Bloomberg article. Further on, he says, many Bungie employees that were fired found out in the morning when they were locked out of services, logins, email access revoked. Others who instead found out in meetings were told not to tell team members themselves as teams would be told by other means. Many employees were unable to say goodbye or exchange contacts. Many team managers were not told at all about who on their team was being laid off and only found out as it happened. So this is absurd to me. This is, this isn't just, this isn't just, you know, oh, you know, we're letting you go, you know, uh, that it's not a kind, it's not a kind escort to the door. It is a, hey, hey, can, can you go grab something from your car real quick? And then when they leave the front door, they slam it behind them and lock it and flip them off through the window. That's kind of what happened here. They just kind of said, you're done. That's it. No further word. I can, I can almost assure you that they probably didn't get any sort of formally written notice when they were initially finding this out. I'm sure maybe down the line they did, but in that moment, their notification of termination was through their services, logins, and emails all being just locked. Done. 
Nextly here we see Jason Schreier from Bloomberg. Bungie laid off about 8% of staff Monday or around 100 people, sources tell Bloomberg. Two weeks ago, staff were told they were projected to miss revenue targets by 45%. Now this is something that I almost find unbelievable. So there's two different things I can see here. Either one, they set their targets, their expectations far too high because it is hard for me to believe that they missed their profit margins or the revenue targets by 45%. That's a huge number when it comes to these types of things. That is a massive, massive number. And given that Destiny is so aggressively monetized through the Eververse, through dungeon passes, through expansions, through season passes, through pretty much any avenue possible, Destiny is monetized in one of the most egregious ways of pretty much any game in the industry at the moment. Sure, there are some other companies that, or other games that have much more scummy and shitty ways of, you know, nickel and diming you, but Destiny's pretty smart about the way they do it. It only takes a minute for you to kind of understand, wow, I'm getting double dipped on, you know? These are things that I should already have access to given the price I paid, but no, they, they find their way around. So something else I want to look at was on Paul Tassie's page here. This, this right here, this is from the IGN article. These are some bullet points that IGN covers in their article. This says, Parsons said the right people had been kept for D2. The right people. Meaning that anybody that was let go to him were the wrong people, which is extremely contradictory to what he said in his post about these people are fantastic people, my utmost recommendations, you guys should hire these guys, but they weren't good enough for you. They were the wrong people for you. If they're so fantastic, if they're if they're so highly, highly, highly hailed as these great developers that you just love and that you have your utmost sympathy for, then why did you fire them? That doesn't make any sense. Clearly, so, he said the right people. This is this is something that was clearly spoken of behind these developers that were released backs. This was to the people who who remained, the ones that were kept around. He said this to them, not to any specific news agency or any uh, journalists or outwardly to the public. This was to the people that he kept around and assumingly to him at least, thought was gonna be behind closed doors. But no, it took less than 24 hours for this to get put on blast for him saying that those were the right people they kept and the wrong people were let go. Because I can guarantee you that this man is getting ooh, one fat, fat bonus off the backs of these people's livelihoods. Ah, oh, dude. Anyway, the next point here is employees told player sentiment at all time low. Employees begged for changes to get players back. Okay, bear with me here. The community has been begging for Bungie to to get on track, to to pass to pass on the don't over deliver. It creates patterns. A very, very, very nailed down quote from Bungie. One that everybody just, that's the, that's the trump card right there. Don't over deliver. The devs wanted to do more in order to get players back. Anytime there's been a season or an event or something that has come out that feels like it's underbaked, underbaked, half-baked, the devs were rallying and encouraging more, 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 more to get players back and invested into the game because the developers, the ones who are making the game, the people who are sitting behind their computers doing the hard work, putting in the time to make the systems work, create the content, all that, they're passionate about Destiny. And and we can, we can go back and forth all day about, oh, no, they're not, no, they're not, yes, they are, no, they're not. Personally, the way I see it, and if you think otherwise, good for you. But the way that I see it, the developers do really care. Otherwise, they wouldn't be working there with the fear of being let go like this. If there was a fear of being let go the way that there is and they're sticking around, that means they're, they're working towards something that they like. And based on the sentiment I have seen throughout Twitter the past couple of days or the past day or so, is that a lot of these developers that were let go or who are still there, this is their dream job. This is what this is what they've wanted. This is this is their their dream since they had gotten into the development business. So to be let go, it's extra heartbreaking. And for the ones who stuck around, a lot of them have expressed forms of like survivor's guilt, saying this was my dream job and now it feels like a fucking nightmare, you know? So the employees 
rallied for more content in order to get people to come back and play the game more. The employees, and rather instead of listening to them, listening to the ones who are creating this product that is bringing in revenue for these big suits up top, rather than listening to them and going, you know what, maybe we should rebuild the rapport with our player base and deliver on a proper level, not over delivery. Their definition of over delivery is, is normal delivery, adequate content is over delivery in the big dog's mind. Under delivering is adequate content in the big dog's mind. Their scale is skewed. And rather than going forward and making changes to fix these things, they fired them. Final Shape pre-orders are lower than expected. Many upset about Bungie's big costly new headquarters. So they got their shiny new place, but their pre-orders are low. That's kind of to be expected following Lightfall, don't you think? Uh, uh, a very disappointing DLC, mind you. It's a bit expected to have a little bit, a little bit of hesitancy to pre-order the expansion. I'm sure when the expansion drops that those numbers are going to jump up. You know, they don't think ahead to that point. They think about right now, how much money do I have right now? If it's not enough, hmm, how can we make that money back? Get out. You're fired. Bungie tried to hide exact numbers of layoffs internally. About 100 layoffs from Bloomberg report confirmed. Final Shape and Marathon delays also confirmed. It is sad that the Final Shape and Marathon got delayed, but if I'm being honest, folks, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how much I, I feel, I feel like wrong for like supporting Bungie in a way. It's a weird internal sort of battle because I, for one, I love Destiny. It's been a, a pillar, I would say, of my of my gaming career for the past 10 years. And especially Bungie, I should say, has been a staple of gaming for my entire life. One of the first games I ever played was Combat Evolved when I was about four years old, three years old on the original Xbox. So I have this very deep liking for Bungie, but the Bungie that we knew has been chipped away at, has been skinned alive, meat torn from the bone, and all we have left are the porous bones of what was. And despite loving Destiny so much and, you know, wanting to support the developers who are still there, the ones who are still putting in the effort to try and create a game that we like, because there are still developers that are, you know, pretty front facing developers on Twitter who, who speak out a bunch. Um, that I've grown to sort of uh, recognize when they come up on the feed and whatnot, I associate them with Bungie and they're still there. Some of them are still there. So you want to support them, but boy, do you want to just stick it to the fucking man. Pete Parsons, man, the CEOs, the managers, those those groups of people. So it's a bit of an internal battle, you know, when it comes to the, the morals of enjoying uh, the content. When was the last time a CEO took a pay cut in order to keep their, their studio alive? It doesn't happen. And when I think about whether it's, you know, good or bad to, you know, keep supporting Bungie and like, you know, wanting to support the veterans who are there. And despite, despite all of this, a lot of veterans have been cut. So although I still want to support Bungie and whatnot, and the developers that are there, there is one or two. There are two people who were laid off for what I can only feel to be malicious reasoning. Because there's no reason for these people to be laid off. There's no reason for these two specific people to be laid off. And those two people are Michael Salvatore and Michael Seacrest, the composers for Bungie. Michael Salvatore, I don't know if you know how far back Michael Salvatore's career goes in terms of Bungie's tenure. His, or his tenure at Bungie. It goes back to 1997 with Myst, a game that came before Halo, before, before Destiny. He has been with Bungie practically since the beginning for over 25 years, has created the soundtracks for the first Myst, the second Myst, Combat Evolved, uh, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, Destiny, each of Destiny's expansions, Destiny 1 including Dark Below, House of Wolves, The Taken King, Rise of Iron, Destiny 2, The Vanilla Launch, the music in that, Michael Salvatore, the whole Red War experience, Curse of Osiris, Warmind, Shadow Keep, Forsaken, Beyond Light, Witch Queen, Light Fall, Michael Salvatore and Michael Seacrest both contributed to some of the most memorable and beautiful soundtracks in gaming. It can be argued that Bungie's games have soundtracks that really bring out the soul of, of the experience. These guys are the soul of the gameplay experience. Your atmosphere 
is only enlightened by the soundtrack. It sets the tone, it sets the vibe, it, it, it builds the world. Because could you imagine playing through the final mission on Halo 3 and you have some royalty-free music playing in the back? I couldn't imagine. The Halo title screen music. Could you imagine if that was some Cocoa Melon shit? I can't, but they, they, they messed up on this one. They messed up on this one big time because it when it comes to cost cutting i can't i can't imagine how in any way this this is a a, a positive change how this is a positive thing to do out of everybody what makes them go hmm where can we cut costs the music department the creators of our ost that's disgusting to me. It's horrific. It feels like the the legacy, the heart and soul of Bungie has been just completely and utterly tarnished. Lit a blaze, dragged through mud, and plunged to fucking hell. And it sucks because it feels like the the Bungie that we knew is is gone. The Bungie I grew up with, the Bungie I loved and wanted to support through anything, even through the worst of DLCs, I was like, you know what? At least it's something from them because there is nothing else from them. This here is a response to uh, Paul Tassi from Michael Salvatore. This will end on this note here. Uh, hopefully uh, a little bit of a sort of bitter sweet sort of end because although the situation situation is dire, it's sad, it sucks, it's the worst I've seen from this company. The worst I've seen from a franchise and development team that I've, quite frankly, grown to very much so love. He says, Hi Paul, thanks for reaching out to me, and for your kind words. The last 24 hours have been crazy and I'm still sorting through my feelings. Many of my good friends were also let go, and I feel awful for them. My heart goes out to everyone who lost their job yesterday. Regarding myself, the overwhelming feeling I have is one of gratitude. Beginning in 1997, Bungie provided me the opportunity to contribute music to some of the most amazing games ever made. I've been truly blessed to work with so many awesome creative people over the years. I've learned so much from them, not only as a composer, but as a human being during my time there. One of the things that I always loved about being a part of the team was our willingness to take risks, which has always been a part of Bungie's DNA. And when we would fail, we wouldn't retreat, we'd reload. That is at the heart of what kept me engaged year after year through success and failure. I truly wish the best for my friends who are still there, and I have no doubt that they will be able to right the ship. To the fans, please don't hate on them. Give them a chance to blow you away like they've done so many times before. Peace to all, Mike. I'm surprised that he's been able to keep as much composure as he has and deliver such a heartfelt and kind response here that is still relatively optimistic for the future of Bungie and the development team there because lord only knows how how um how much that's probably impacted him in some way it's got to be crazy for him to have something that has been a constant part of your life for 25 plus years just drop you like you're nothing like that that's heartbreaking that's betrayal and he comes in here like yeah like fallout play says uh pure class so that's where we're gonna end it y'all i'm sure there's gonna be some more developments that come on in the future i know this is a really long video but this is kind of just me you know relaying some of the information that i've learned the past you know 24 hours or so it's a very very complex situation there's a lot going on a lot of moving parts it's been baffling to me uh in some way it's been very depressing you know something about it i don't know it feels demotivating and demoralizing and it kind of it's it makes me feel pessimistic for the future of uh of bungie you know at the end of the day despite all these things i do believe that these developers that have been released they will find their footing they will find a uh, a future place of employment i want to say you know it'd be the best case scenario if they were able to come back and you know work for bungie but after being released the way that they were i doubt that they would want to if management there stays the same if they were given back the chance to hey you know come on back come on back if they still see pete parsons in that chair they're saying they're hightailing it in the other direction i wouldn't want to go back there you know, Christmas is just around the corner. It's the holiday season. The last thing you want to do is, you know, struggle to find a job or scramble to find one. At least for us, you know, the community here, the ones who, you know, play the games and all that, I do think that there is still a, there is a very hopeful sort of feeling in the sense that the community is still the community. I think that in the most detrimental of times at Bungie, the community feels most like a community because everybody is rallying around this, you know, the defense of the developers, the ones who've been let go and whatnot, and really recognizing that the top dogs are the ones to, to, to really go against. And I think the best way to go against them, and I've seen a lot of, a lot of talks of this, 
developers need to unionize. Unions make changes. You know, as a player with a union or unionizations with strikes and whatnot, there will be a, a massive drop in content. It could kill a franchise. It can put a massive pause on any content coming out. But the long term effects of a strike or a union, I, I think, would be would be beneficial for the gaming landscape because, you know, 2023 has been a great year for games. You know, you've had Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, most recently Alan Wake 2 looks phenomenal. I would certainly want to get that. Just some very, very high profile, solid games that kind of came out of nowhere. Spider-Man 2, like all these games are just great. It feels like there's been a record high of layoffs. So it's, it's hard to celebrate the wins and the content of the games and the quality of the games when the ones who created it are, are suffering. Something's got to break. And I think right now, Bungie is, is the catalyst. I don't know if you guys are feeling the same, you know, have some discussions in the comments if you feel. Please keep it civil, but we'll see where this goes. I'll catch y'all on the flip side, y'all. Take care. Deuces.